You're watching Kamnet May News Desk. My name is Sharon Kalimbula. The story is making headlines this evening. An eight-year-old girl of Sesheke district dies after sustaining seven dog bites. A 14-year-old boy mysteriously turning blind, needing 36,000 kwacha for eye correction surgery. An managed electronic waste, a source of concern, the Zambia Environmental Management Agency has charged. In international news, U.S. presidential debate set for October 15th officially cancelled. And in sports news, Kava Sochongo sent away from Chipolo Polo camp. Join me shortly for the details. Msika is here. We have you all covered with just 150 kwacha. You can advertise every day from 17 hours to 18 hours. For a 30 second ad, get the benefit of selling your products and services on Msika. For more details, call our marketing department on plus 260-953-995099 plus 260-962 four 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 seven two six or plus two six zero nine seven one one seven seven four six seven email us on info at camnetvafrica.com terms and conditions apply the details it is every parent's dream to see their children grow into normal, responsible adults. But this is not the case with a 14-year-old boy whose bright future depends on a 36,000 kwacha eye operation. Mary Mwanza, the mother to the victim, is saddened at her child's unexplained partial blindness. She has since appealed for help from any well wishes. Details in this report. Mary Mwanza, a mother of Lusaka's Mutendere compound, in pain at the sight of seeing her son's ability to see deteriorating each passing day. She tells Kamne TV that her 14-year-old son, expected to sit for his grade 7 examination, is slowly becoming blind, which she says will make it impossible for him to sit for the exams, a condition she says started when the boy was five years old and later led to his left eye being impaired, is slowly reaching the left eye. After medical tests were done, a chilling bill of 36,000 kwacha was given to the boy's parents for an operation to correct the problem. Mary Mwanza has since turned to the public for help. I'm now five Five years, so in the sweater, she is in the it's brown. The third name, the petina, and then the China, my pinky, fell and don't lamp him. My bottom bear came on water by name. You know, but I end up of foot, man, you cannot put down a tea, and so I could write snow that could be the new one of the phones. So now, but I end up of foot, man, you know. I'm <laughs> and the victim wilson zimba says his mother helps him to go to school and hopes for days when he will be able to walk without aid 
Kaiba mati pasal mati sebulan. Kau beres tio semua kau ni soalnya. Elo tipe final bang exam di sembilan juta yang. I problem ya main suci la pemain nabi dah last i last week. The mother to the boy is since appealing to anyone wishes to come to their aid before the situation gets worse. Sharon Kalimula, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Sad state of affairs indeed there. We hope that the power of media will help reach out for help. Moving on in the news, but still in Mutendere, residents of Lusaka's Mutendere compound have bemoaned the continued water challenge and excessive load shedding the area has been facing for some months now. The residents have lamented that for close to a week now, the area has had no water, making it difficult for them to do their day-to-day -day activities. They have disclosed that they have to cross the busy road every time they have to fetch water, making it dangerous and a daily threat to their lives. They have also disclosed that excessive load shedding in the area has affected their businesses. The residents reiterated that they spend all day without electricity and the result in them failing to do business. So, Imagine living life without water for two days, a situation that has left Lusaka's Mutendere residents to endure for quite some time. Water crisis in this compound is a continued challenge faced by the residents despite several complaints made to address the situation. Just like other parts of Lusaka facing this challenge, residents describe the situation as a serious crisis that needs urgent attention. <laughs> So it's better government ya paka konze kuli manzi, dafya manzi, ili mponta ati, sunga sambe kupanda manzi, sunga desi malo manzi. So, wa madirama wa paso, wa maona paso, walipira tuma five kwa ati, penze wandu ambiri pato. So company, we survive a manzi, chani wandu waka putika, so government, ite konze, dafya kairi, wandu ndife. Sinti sema imu, haa, but nife wandu ndise, hey, kairi hapa. Manzi ya wafuti ya wanitu mkumuni, kastizo wa kansi ni waganiza. Wana wangona jumpa tiyama ki, wabuta kapuru kuma broku. Uko, elue wanafaka fore, maya moto kaka wapunga wana wangono. Last time kena wanaka mnisa na njinga po, kana kwa kafurukutu. Meanwhile, mass load shedding is something that has not spared this area. So uh, I don't know what they can do or what they should do, but it's not fair. Again, some of us, you, hygienically speaking, it's not right. We need to cook. There's a lot of things we need to do with water and electricity. So they should put more effort. I don't know the government. I don't know if I should blame the government or blame who, but yeah, there's somebody who needs to be blamed, and I think we all know who needs to be blamed. These residents wait upon President Lungu's promise made in Parliament that load shedding will be a thing of the past. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamne TV News in Lusaka. With the increase in usage of information communications technology, electronic waste is on the rise with people not knowing how to do with what will soon become a global challenge. The Zambia Environmental Management Agency, Zema, is concerned at the matter and the manner in which this kind of waste is increasing. Zema, Principal Public Relations Officer, Friday Piri, has since advised members of the public to be aware of how they dispose electronic waste. Electronic Quest include damaged phones, television sets, among other gadgets. Electronic waste 
also known as e-waste, is now the world's fastest growing waste stream. Billions of people use electronics, therefore, it is only natural that electronic waste is easily generated. E-waste include out-of-use television sets, phones, microwaves, computers, among other electronic gadgets. The danger may come from direct contact with harmful materials found in e-waste, such as lead. The huge amount of lead in e-waste, if released in the environment, could cause severe damage to human blood and kidneys. It is in this vein that the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, Zema, is calling for responsible disposal of e-waste. Waste has toxic substances that are harmful to both human beings and the environment in general. Uh, some of them contain lead, there is cadmium, and several other components that are harmful when they when they when a human being or the environment is exposed to them so when you throw them in a landfill for example anyhow the way it is being done now because i think we have very few facilities uh, which are doing these things correctly or disposing electronic waste correctly as required so these end up at a landfill and uh, when they are exposed like that maybe the, the water seeping through and whatever uh, is coming from there is uh, is polluting the the water we drink similarly if 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 you burn uh, i know there is a lot of open air burning that is taking place which is also against the law according to the environmental management act uh, there is a lot of burning and if someone is burning some kind of material and in that which they are burning there is the uh, uh, electronic waste the smoke that comes from there the chemicals that are released from there can be quite harmful can cause different respiratory diseases uh, to ourselves as uh, as human beings and including other animals uh, that live uh, or that rely on the environment for their for their livelihood to date there's been some recycling on some valuable items found in e-waste such as copper and gold zambia's recycling industry is growing with companies coming on board Zambia is that everyone that's doing recycling, you're doing your normal recycling of paper, plastics, uh, your metals, all the metals. Every, there is a solution for all those. So, but electronic boards was the biggest challenge. And in most of the world, there's actually some conventions that have, they've actually sat together and discovered that electronic waste has got uh, what they call the heavy metals. Heavy metals such as lead. Lead, if it goes into the ground, it uh, uh, sorry, interacts with the groundwater, it pollutes. Kabwe at the moment is one of the worst polluted uh, towns in the world. If we let this go, it will eventually get there. So as e-wastes, we actually we approach government to see if we can set up policy or they can set up policy or assist us with the collection of waste, which we are still fighting with. So we collect, at the moment we are collecting, storing and separating, as you can see we are to dismantle the separate components of the, of the, of the machines. I'll call them machines for now. You've got your, your metals, which is easily recycled here. Yeah? You've got your plastics, uh, plastics equally recycled here. Yeah? And uh, it actually dif di uh, it differs with the type of plastics that are available. Like this is ABS. According to the World Health Organization, a lot of organizations have called for intervention because e-waste and lead extracts affect mostly children. People are therefore encouraged to reuse or take care of their electronic gadgets so that they can last longer and reduce wastage. The policy, I think they're trying to set up and it's, it's, they're doing the right thing. But implementation, one well, of the challenges that you face is that. And here, that's what we've found. Because if I tell you a simple example, most of the people that have, uh, we've collected most of the waste from, even the, what we call the corporates, mm -hmm. they are non-governmental organizations. They have, they, their standards are based from either Europe, that's where their standards are, they have to dispose of. We've approached all, most of the government entities. If you, as I said, we registered in 2018. That started operations essentially first of this, this month. First Sharon Kalimbula. Kamnet News, Lusaka. And in a related development, the Golden Party Zambia is concerned about government's revelations that over 1,000 children below the age of six years in Kabwe are victims of lead poisoning. Party President Jackson Silawe notes with sadness that the effects of lead poisoning include IQ diff 
deficits as well as behavioral and attentional challenges which the country cannot afford to go through. Mr. Silawe adds that led affects educational outcomes and has been established that adverse effects can be experienced at even a very low levels of exposure. He has therefore called on government to come up with a robust job creation strategy for Kawe in honor to honor their pronouncements on reopening the defunct Zambia China, Molongoshi Textiles and the Kawe Industrial Fabric Company, among others. Additionally, Golden Party Zambia is also urging government to set up a specialized hospital in Kawe to treat poisoning effectively. Revelations by government that over 1,000 children, mostly below the age of six years, in Kawe are victims of lead poisoning is a source of great concern to us as the Golden Party of Zambia and I believe all well-meaning Zambians. As we may be aware, the effects of lead poisoning include IQ defects as well as behavioral and attentional challenges. In the case of learners, lead affects educational outcomes and it has been established that adverse effects can be experienced even at very low levels of exposure. While we note some of the measures being put in place by various stakeholders like Zimrip, which include the procurement of four lead care equipment placed at some health facilities in Kawe, and the provision of nutritional supplement to mostly children below the age of 14 years, we strongly feel more still needs to be done. Going by research, when can one can easily understand that most affected are children whom we expect to take over the running of the country's affairs, going by the adage, imiti kula empanga. It has also been established that most affected areas which include Kasanda, Makandanyama, Chowa, Mutwe Ansofu and Makululu are among the communities falling in the low income bracket, a thing that should raise more concern to all well meaning Zambians. This is evidenced by the number of young people patronizing the de facto cover lead and zinc mining sites indiscriminately in order to earn a living while exposing themselves. Moving on in the news, residents of Lusaka's garden compound have accused officers in charge of issuing national registration cards to be corrupt with the process. The residents have disclosed that officers deployed on these sites to be giving out NRCs are making some people pay so that they can be put first on the line. They have reiterated that some came early as early as 06 hours, but because of corrupt activities by the officers, those that have managed to obtain the an idea are those who pay them something. Meanwhile, the ward councillor has expressed gratitude with how the process has been so far. Details in this report. Since morning, these people have gathered with the hope of obtaining a national registration card. However, the process to others seems timely slow as they accuse the officers in charge of giving out NRCs to be choosy and corrupt. A check by Kamni TV in the area reveals how many had to spend hours just for them to obtain an NRC. <laughs> The government should, 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 should be put to a process. We have a, when one comes here, we have to spend, uh, should not spend much, much time. Spending time with you, because you have to think to, to do. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't these residents of Lusaka's garden compound say the process is unfair. 
Meanwhile, the area councillor says he's pleased with how the process is being conducted. And the set at Ingolele Primary School, where the, our people from all walks of life are getting their analysis. And uh, I'm delighted that yesterday uh, the area MP, Ordinary Bojin Kapatash, was in my ward, and even the Minister for Home Affairs, he was also in my ward. And my appeal to the youths is less than just in numbers, and they'll be in my ward from 9th to 14th, and they'll be working. And thank you so much for the turnout. Otherwise, it's massive. People are there, and the, the queue are large. So I can just appeal that thank you so much for everything, whatever is happening. But let's take an advantage of this that NLC is a, uh, it's a, a document which, number one, in terms of employment, they will ask for NLC. So my, the youth is must to have that NLC. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Community TV News in Osaka. Republican Progressive Party Vice President Leslie Chikose has called on the Electoral Commission of Zambia to listen to the views of the people of Zambia concerning the pre-online voter registration process. Mr. Chikose says ECZ must stop being arrogant and contain the different views being put forth by some stakeholders and concerned citizens. He adds that this makes people of Zambia have doubt over the same process as so much so that he, uh, I beg your pardon. He adds that this makes the people of Zambia doubt the whole process. Mr. Chikose further explains that the whole process has left people question the credibility of ECZ. The Electoral Commission of Zambia is in the process of online voter registration as a preparatory measure for the 2021 general elections. That's why uh, our call uh, is that uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia must be listening to the people. They must not be so arrogant, so desperate when it comes to coming up with the uh, you know, modalities to do with the electoral uh, process. They must not be seemingly biased to one uh, individual and so on, or one, or one political system or political uh, you know, uh, party. So uh, our view is that, uh, uh, of course, uh, the last meeting that was held, the Electoral Commission of Zambia said that uh, assured the people that were there, unfortunately I did not attend that meeting, uh, that um, they were going to call the stakeholders once more, once they came come up with the document with the Zambia Law uh, Development uh, Agency and so on. Uh, our position is that the pre-registration, uh, I, I don't know how we can put it, we have all, all the time called that it must be stopped forthwith and that uh, it is illegal, irregular and it, it, it is uh, a recipe for suspicion and a probable uh, recipe for anarchy. Patriotic Front Northwestern Province Youth Chairman Amimon Hara says the party is still intact despite the move taken by Dawson Kafwaya, who recently defected to the United Party for National Development. Mr. Kafwaya says that the defection has no impact on the party in the province. Meanwhile, Mr. Hara has warned UPND youths in the province that the party will not condone any maneuvers to destabilize the party. The by the UPND is that we are buying cancers is uncalled um, Knowing very well that we, we've made a lot of progress in terms of party mobilization in the province and they are feeling the heat, so hence the accusations. Otherwise, as, as PF, we, we focused on party mobilization, eyes on the ball, boots on the ground. Uh, we don't do politics of Facebooking and the other things, so they, they should be ready. Even the recent uh, uh, by-election that has been created in Kasempa, 
I can assure you, uh, the media and the people of Northwestern province, that we, as a party, we are very much ready and we are equal to the task until we usher in uh, Dr. Edgar Chagualungu in 2021. When you look at the Honorable Bokafoyas uh, coming into PF, we came alone. He never came with people and he went alone. So the time that he joined the PF, he found already the PF in government. So we are not moved. And let me take this opportunity also to warn those youths of UPND who wants to cause confusion. We are aware of the fact that they are planning to cause confusion and let me warn them that we are equal to the task and we are aware of their plans. Because Northwestern is not for UPND, Northwestern is for all of us. So let them desist from uh, doing pro uh, provocative ways. Because otherwise we are also ready. Our role is to protect the party, our role is to protect the president. Our president has emphasized so many times, okay, so many times and he has spoken against violence and that is exactly what we are trying to do as PF and we lead by example. You're watching Comnet News. Just now we take a break, but still to come after that, government sees nothing wrong with taking over private schools, making them public. Stay with us. Take control of your tax planning. Avoid penalties and interest. Returns and payments due by the 10th of the month for declarations of the previous month's transactions are pay as you earn and skills development levy. Returns and payments due by the 14th of the month are turnover tax, withholding tax, mineral royalty tax, tourism levy, gaming and baiting, presumptive tax. Returns and payments for all withholding VAT agents is the 16th of the month. Returns and payments for all VAT registered suppliers is the 18th of the month. Submit the returns and make payments on or before the respective due dates to avoid penalties on the late submission of returns and payments of taxes. Further, note that VAT tax invoices for all business-to-business -business and business-to-government transactions must bear the tip-in of the buyer without fail. Zambia Revenue Authority. My tax. Your tax. Our destiny. Stay home. Stay safe. Times have changed. With the advent of the coronavirus, Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company would like to advise its esteemed customers to avoid visiting crowded places. You don't have to move to pay your water bill. You can do it in the convenience of your home. You can pay your water bills through Zanako Zapit, Stanbic Bank, Standard Chartered Bank and f &B. You can also use Airtel, MTN and Zamtel Quacha Mobile Money Transfer Services. For any inquiries to report a fault, please contact our customer service on plus 260-211-251-571, plus 260-975-618-618, and toll-free line 5957, Zamtel only. You can also simply email customer service at lwsc.com. This public announcement is brought to you by the Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company. Water is life. Sanitation is health. This is Comnet Main News Desk. Welcome back. In a sad development, an eight-year-old girl of Sesheke district has died after she was attacked by a dog. The child, identified as Cleopatra Chibwe, died after a boa bull dog belonging to the neighbor attacked her. According to police spokesperson Esther Katongo, the victim sustained seven dog bite wounds on her neck. She says the incident happened when the victim allegedly walked into the yard of the dog owner to play with her friends when one of the dogs charged at her. Ms. Katongo says the child was later rushed to Yeta District Hospital, where she eventually died. She has disclosed that the body of the deceased is currently in Yeta Hospital mortuary, awaiting post-mortem. She has, however, disclosed that the owner of the dog is in police custody, awaiting court proceedings, while the dog which attacked the victim, including two owners, have been killed. 
Ministry of General Education says taking over of Horizon schools by government is not a unique thing as government has done that in the past since the 1990s. Minister of Education Dr. Dennis Wanchinga explains that government thought it was necessary to take over the school for some time. He adds that Horizon School is not the only school that has been taken over by government as SOS school has also been taken over. The minister disclosed during a joint media briefing yesterday at the Ministry of Religious Affairs where he gave the current position of the Horizon School. Recently, government forcibly took over Horizon Schools and appointed a new chairman and installed a new principal. Last year, in December 2019, in December, rather, Horizon School sued the government over the compulsory acquisition of stand number N6565-196 in Kablonga. The schools charged that government had not disclosed its public interest over the decision to acquire the premises. The matter is, however, still active in the Lusaka High Court. Uh, in our society, because, uh, for instance, this program focuses a lot on empowering the youth with information. But for us, that's not enough. We want to have a child that is respectful, uh, that you know, recognizes the traditional values, uh, a child that uh, uh, you know, is a child of God. Uh, so I think this is, these are the things that are now supposed to go in, in the second set of consultations. So don't mix the first set of consultations, which led to the, which I referred to, which led to the commencement of the program, but we, we are now having the second state of consultations which have not been completed, in fact, which have just started, as the other minister has outlined. Uh, I think that's my answer to that first question, my contribution to that first question. The second question was on the horizon school. Um, he has guided that we, 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 we confine our questions uh, to, to, to the content of the uh, of the issues raised here, but I think I will give you a benefit answer. You know, the, the taking over of schools. Now, World Health Mentor Day is observed on the 10th October every year with the overall objective of raising awareness of mental health issues around the world and mobilizing efforts in supporting mental health. The day provides an opportunity for all stakeholders working in the mental health issues to talk about their work and what more needs to be done to make sure that mental health care a reality for people worldwide. According to a report released by the World Health Organization this year, Year's World Mental Health Day comes at a time when people's daily lives have changed considerably as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. World Health Organization says investment in mental health programs at the national and international levels, which have already suffered from years of chronic underfunding, is now more important than it has been ever. The report says this is why the goal of this year's World Health Mental Day campaign is increased investment in the mental health. In Zambia, the medical for quality health care in Zambia has charged that the mental illness should be should not be hidden, but people should seek specialized treatment when they notice traits of mental illnesses. Today is the World Health um, Mental Day, and um, I've been having challenges with the different people have been going through difficulties when it comes to psychological problems. And uh, when it comes to mental disorder, it can affect everyone and we encourage uh, parents, even uh, the general public, uh, to be visiting the uh, healthcare facilities so that uh, we can be uh, monitored by the doctor. Um, having a mental challenge doesn't mean, mean that maybe you are having the mental disoriented, no. You can go going to difficult times because of stress, uh, because of being depressed, uh, we can be having bipolar, that is a, 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 a mental challenge. So we all need health uh, um, experts so that we can be helped in this matter. So it's, it's, today is a day that we are celebrating as um, health workers, even the general public. So we need to unite and work together and see how we can uh, suppress these uh, challenges and difficulties that we are going through as, um, as people when it comes to um, mental disorders. Definitely we are doing enough when it comes to sensitize and when it comes to attend the patients. 
but the problem is uh, that we're having is uh, the, the challenge that we're having is, uh, is, is in the community. Uh, the, the parents they keep on keeping their children home to avoid some embarrassment, but it should not be like that. When you have a challenge, when you have a disorder, we just have to seek uh, the attention from the doctor so that we can be helped. But as the health experts, uh, we are doing our level best to sensitize people so that they understand about different types of mental disorders so that they can be helped. The Human Rights Commission is calling for members of the public and various stakeholders to make submissions to the Law Development Commission for, to appropriately amend the Penal Code and the Criminal Procedures Act in order to enhance respect for rights to life. This call comes in the work of the Wild Day Against Death Penalty Commemoration, which was declared in order to raise awareness on the conditions affecting individuals facing the death sentence and build momentum to towards universal abolition. A total of 106 countries globally have already abolished the death penalty for all crimes, while 28 countries, including Zambia, are considered to have abolished the death penalty in practice. This year marks the 18th commemoration of this global event under the theme Access to Cancel a Matter of Life or Death. Human Rights Commission says the theme highlights the importance of the right to effective legal representation for individuals who may face a death sentence. It is in this vein that the HRC is encouraging everyone to support the government to successfully graduate from uh, graduate Zambia into the growing number of countries that have abolished the death penalty both in law and practice. As the international community commemorates the World Day Against the Death Penalty, which falls on 10th of October, the Human Rights Commission wishes to commend the Zambian government for not executing anyone facing death penalty during the last 23 years. That is a commendable record of human rights which must be upheld. The right to life is sacred and no one should be allowed to take it away, including the government. The theme for this year's commemoration is access to counsel, a matter of life or death. It focuses on the right to effective legal representation for persons facing the death penalty. That lack of effective legal representation may result out into the execution of an innocent person and to ensure that there is no such you know miscarriage of justice the best safeguard is to abolish the death penalty altogether a total of 106 countries have already abolished the death penalty while 28 countries including Zambia, have abolished the death penalty in practice, and that is commendable. According to the UN, any country that has not carried out executions in the period up to 10 years is considered to have abolished the death penalty in practice. Therefore, Zambia should maintain that legacy and also move forward now to join the growing number of countries that have abolished the death penalty both in law and in practice because it will be a tragedy if we have a president or an administration that is going to resume execution of people on death penalty. Life imprisonment is the adequate punishment for any form of crime, and that should be promoted. We call um, a We take our last break, but still to come is international and sports news. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings, and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com.
I have used Oracle Pure Glycerin for two years now. It has really worked for me. It has cleared all the black spots on my face. It has restored my skin beauty. It also smoothens the skin. Try Oracle Pure Glycerin for perfect skin. If it's not Oracle Glycerin, then it's not Pure Glycerin. In international news, U.S. President Donald Trump has given his first on-camera interview since testing positive for coronavirus. He says he is feeling well and planning a public event at the White House on Saturday. But a virtual debate with his Democratic rival Joe Biden has been cancelled after Trump's refused to participate. In other news, the U.K. government is being warned that tens of thousands of more lives will be lost to cancer unless it does more to reduce a backlog of screening and treatment. Hospitals has been, have been forced drastically to reduce cancer services due to the coronavirus pandemic. Al Jazeera has more on these stories. Uh, I know a lot of people that Appearing on his favorite news channel, like President Donald Trump was China. feeling positive. But I feel really, really strong, and a lot of people don't feel that way sometimes for a while. He credited a still experimental antibody treatment for his speedy recovery from coronavirus. Are you tested? I heard you, I heard you said you were going to test again today. Have you been retested? Uh, I have been retested, and I, I haven't even found out numbers or anything yet, but I've been retested, and I know I'm at either the bottom of the scale or free. He said the therapeutic is on That's not likely to appease his critics. I hope you stay healthy who question his plans to host crowds for an event on the White House lawn on Saturday, less than two weeks after his diagnosis. It was shortly after this event in the Rose Garden that he and several people who attended tested positive. The president, eager to get back on the campaign trail, is also planning to hold a rally in Florida on Monday. That's despite news that nine people who attended this rally in Minnesota on September 18th have tested positive for the coronavirus, two of them requiring hospitalization. Oh, Mr. President. But as for the debate scheduled for October 15th, that's been canceled by the commission sponsoring it after the president refused to do it online instead of in person. How long will I be on chemo for? Um, for however long it works for. Kelly Smith's magnetic personality brought people together on social media, sharing a zest for life. They all had one thing in common, cancer. With COVID cases prioritized, her treatment was cut short, along with her life. Even though we knew that the cancer she had could not be cured, um, the chemotherapy was life extending. Uh, and at her age, you know, especially when she's got a six-year-old son, every day is precious. The death of his daughter with his grandson left behind led Craig to organize a campaign pressurizing the UK government to do more about cancer care. It's fronted by a leading cancer specialist. It's desperate and it's still desperate and my heart goes out to these people. The government needs to put pressure on the senior NHS managers to get and give them perhaps the resource to do it, but we need some action. The need for treatment is daunting. Government targets to reduce a backlog of three million people waiting for screening aren't going to be met. The campaign includes demands for a $450 million program to increase radiotherapy. It will be made available in COVID-free outpatient departments, but even that's a drop in the ocean. The NHS is a free-for-all service, but it can't cope with demand, and the COVID situation has made things even worse. The number of cancer sufferers trying to get private treatment is at an all-time high, but so many people can't afford it. Online appeals and crowdfunding show the desperation. Wendy Peake had been on a free clinical trial with the NHS in the hope of curing a rare cancer, ocular melanoma. It was cancelled because of COVID. Her daughters started fundraising. It's been a roller coaster. It's been emotionally draining, but it was the best thing that we ever did. And we've got so much support from so many people. If you raise the money, you live. And if you, raise, if you don't raise it, you die. Wendy is now on one round of treatment costing $50,000. If she can raise more money, she's been told there's a good chance of staying alive. 
So many people like her won't even get this far. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Manchester. We now look at sports news. Chipolo Polo skipper Kaba Sochongo has been excused from the ongoing international friendly matches for technical reasons. Following the decision of the technical bench, Chongo will not proceed with the rest of the team to South Africa where they will play Bafana Bafana on Sunday in Rustenburg. All the parties involved have been informed with Chipolo Polo coach Melotin wishing the players all the best in his career. The TP Mazembe defender is expected to fly out of his best in Lubumbashi. Meanwhile, the team is in good spirits ahead of the high-profile game with Bafana Bafana on Sunday. Football Association of Zambia Communications Manager Sidney Mongala says that this is according to the reports received. Well, that item brings us to the end of our news. But before we go, let's just look at the headlines. An eight-year-old girl of Sesheke district dies after sustaining seven dog bites. A 14-year-old boy mysteriously turning blind, needing 36,000 kwacha for eye corrective surgery. And managed electronic waste, a source of concern, the Zambia Management Environmental Management Agency has charged. In international news, U.S. presidential debate set for October 15th, officially cancelled. And sports news, Kaba Sochongo sent away from Chipolo Polo Camp. We now look at the Kamnet verse for the day, and it's coming from Jeremiah 10, verse 10, and it reads, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. Thank you so much for staying with us throughout our broadcast of the news. My name is Sharon Kalimbula. Join us again tomorrow at the same time. Good night.